Christine McGuinness was diagnosed with autism in 2021, a diagnosis her three children also have. She's taken those experiences and created something very special. Here to tell us more, Christine McGuinness. <laughs> Christine. So nervous. Why? Oh, You've been here a million times. I know, I know, and this is like the most comfortable place for me on telly is behind this desk with you. Like, oh, it's just been good. so long. I'm nervous. We've missed you. I've missed you. <laughs> Can I say, and I know this is superficial, but you look wowser. <laughs> <laughs> she puts the work in as well. I love watching Whoa. your gym workouts and everything. I love your video. <laughs> your video the complete hilarious. opposite. <laughs> 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 no, but you're looking amazing everywhere, strutting your stuff on the red carpets as well. Thank you. I'm trying. I'm trying to just keep going, enjoy life. I'm so grateful for everything and just being here today. Obviously, we're here to talk about the children's book that I've written, yeah. but I'm just... I'm, I'm blessed in so many ways. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's been a crazy year, but I've had so many positives, and this yeah. is just one of them. And being back here as well, is it, it's amazing. I'm oh, so lucky. Oh, it's so lovely to have you. <laughs> well, listen, let's talk about this uh, amazing book, uh, Amazing Me, Amazing You. Now, this is a children's book, as you say, and a labour of love for, from your point of view, isn't it? Tell us a bit more about it. It's something that I'm passionate about. Obviously, I've got three autistic children. I'm autistic myself. And mm -hmm. I wanted to spend last year doing something special, important, personal. I want to educate, I want to help people understand. And I thought, why not put pen to paper? I've always written, I've always journaled. Um, and, I, and I wanted to do something that would help other children understand, children mm -hmm. like mine. I had a lot of parents asking me, how do we introduce our children to autistic children? You know, what would you like us to say? And, and I couldn't think of anything, so I thought, let's put it all in a book. This is a really child-friendly way for, for other children to learn about autistic children and for autistic children to feel included, to yeah. feel represented. In so what book. makes it different, then? The characters are all autistic. Right. Um, it's written in really short sentences, nice, happy, positive quotes, and... It's kind of left open for the children to ask adults questions and to ask whoever's reading it, the mums, the dads, the carers, to ask, you know, why is this character wearing ear defenders? Why does this character not want to eat spaghetti because it's too wet? Why, why would the child have a problem with that? And then hopefully the parents or the adults reading the book will explain that some children have sensory issues, some children are more, you know, they're autistic, they might have ADHD, they might be dyspraxic. Everyone is different and that's absolutely fine, and mm. include them and just make them feel involved. How have things changed, though, since you got your diagnosis with your children? It's so it's, much... You it... took a long time to get your di diagnosis, yeah, didn't you? It, yeah, it did. Well, yeah, I was 33, 32, 33 when oh. I got diagnosed, and I always knew there was something. I always felt different. But it's been amazing. It's been really positive. It was a huge relief for me because I, I genuinely thought I was mad, um, mm. and I didn't realise why... I would overthink so much why I, I am oversensitive and I only eat beige food and I, I have lots of little challenges um, that my children do, but I didn't know exactly why and obviously it all makes sense now. Mm. So to actually know the reasons why, it, it's, it's been a huge positive for me. And when I was talking to my children about them being autistic, I was able to say, you know, it's fine, mummy's autistic too. Yeah, mm. and, and, yeah. Yeah, but... yeah, definitely. And, and for them to know that, you know, mummy goes to work, mummy drives the car, Mummy is trying to make friends. I'm, I'm still not great at it, but I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> Socialising is something I struggle with. I just want to say, when we did Full Monty together, it, you say about children understanding other children, I think it's important for adults as well, because until you... You, you kept that to yourself yeah. when we were doing this amazing big thing where you've just thrown into a group of people you didn't know and it was important it, I think I saw a change in you when you finally were able to admit and come yeah. out and say actually I'm autistic and this is why this and this is why that so it's it's really important to have those conversations. I remember that everybody. so well that time I, it was the first time I had to go and spend time with adults that I didn't really know and I walked into this room and I see Brenda <laughs> stood there and I was like, oh, God, I can't go in. Who do I talk to? And I just felt really awkward. And by the end of it, we were all so close. And mm. that was when I'd, I'd just started talking about me being autistic as well. And, and I tried to not say anything because I didn't want anyone to 
treat me differently mm. or speak to mm. me any different. And I didn't want to be pampered. I just wanted to get on with it. But by day three of everybody eating together in that room, yeah. and I couldn't, and I'd be stood there going, oh, I can't, I can't yeah. go in there, then I just felt like I needed to explain. Mm. And I was what did you learn from that then, Brenda? Well, I, I just thought you can't judge a book by the cover, because I looked at... Christine's beautiful. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, it was about taking off for, for uh, cancer and everything. And all we were looking at her thinking, God, you're stunning, you're gorgeous, you should have no problem with doing that. <laughs> and that was the last thing that she had that she wanted to do on her mind in front of any of us. It was it was just Do you remember it, when they asked me to dance? I know and, and you, I had the biggest meltdown. You, you and, did. Like, and we were all like we just didn't understand it because we just thought she's beautiful, she's gorgeous inside and out. And it and, and it was it was a big realisation for me to just, you know, take that time to talk to somebody and understand and have that time and not be so loud. <laughs> <laughs> She was so loud. So does that change that for you now? Would you, whereas then you didn't really want to say anything, would you always say something now? Would you, would you oh, advise that? It helped me so much, yes. Yeah. So now on job, so after doing the Real Full Monty, I went on to do the games. So by this point, I was so open and confident about talking about being autistic that I actually started that job on day one saying, listen, everyone, I'm, I'm not being rude. I think you're all amazing, but I'm not going to eat with you all yeah. <laughs> because I like to eat on my own and I'm probably not going to eat what you lot are eating because it's all multicoloured and I just like plain beige dry food and that must yeah. be so wonderful after a lifetime mm. of so hiding much. what made you feel safe and comfortable and to be able to just say there's no shame on this this is what yeah. works yeah. for me yeah. and to ask for time out when I need it if things are too much yeah. And, and now I don't feel rude or difficult by just saying, Can I need 10 minutes on my own, yeah. is that OK? And everyone yeah. kind of goes, yeah, mm. cool. And your, and your children, because I think the last time we saw you, I might have got this wrong, your children weren't verbal and now they are. They are, well, yeah. Is that from going to school? What? Or any special From, Well, thing? reading stories, again, because just going back to the book, reading stories is something that I always done before they were verbal. I think pictures were just so amazing for them, they could, they could recognise things and I tried to include that in the book. I tried to always make pictures that were their personal items, so it could be their personal water bottle or, you know, their favourite plate. I would take a picture of that, I'd leave it on the table and when they couldn't ask me for what they wanted, I would take them to go and point at the pictures. Yeah. And that became a way of communicating for us before And then that moved able. into... Cos I have a friend who has a young child who's having the same Yeah, visuals are, yeah, are visuals. amazing, oh. yeah. And so they were non-verbal till four or five? So when they were four, so they started school, the twins right. started school, and all they could say was, um, Mummy, Daddy, please and thank you. And that so was So this it. is incredible. Wow. This well, is now incredible. they don't show up. <laughs> <laughs> No, they're, they're doing absolutely amazing and I read the book with them and they told me I was cool. I don't think I've ever been called cool ever. So I'll take that. Oh. I feel like that's and so from cool. And from your kids, yeah. that's you. That is good. That is good. <laughs> well, listen, Chrissy, it's always lovely yeah. to, uh, to have you here. So thank you so much for coming. And of course, it's World Book Day. What a fantastic day to publish a book. Yeah. Um, amazing me, amazing you. Chrissy McGuinness, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs>